Nation on Facebook and Twitter with Good Day Dakota. It's 538. Welcome back. Well, you hear about high pressure and low pressure all the time in weather forecasts, but what exactly do they mean? Yeah, well, new this morning here to break it all down for us is meteorologist Amber Wheeler to explain it all in this week's WeatherWise. Good morning, Amber. Well, guys, let's start off with the bigger picture here. When you see areas or you hear us talk about areas of high pressure on the map, the flow around the center of high pressure is going to be clockwise or what we call anticyclonic. In the southern hemisphere, the flow is completely opposite. It's cyclonic or counterclockwise, but it doesn't matter which hemisphere it's in, high pressure works the same throughout the world. So it promotes a sinking air, which is associated with clear skies, light wind, and stable conditions. Right now, we're under the influence of high pressure, and so that's why we're so clear. Deserts are under semi-permanent high pressure systems, which is why they are so dry. And in the United States, that would be our southwestern states. The opposite of high pressure is, of course, low pressure. The flow around this system is counterclockwise or cyclonic. This is also the complete opposite spin direction in the southern hemisphere. And you may not realize it, but you actually have a love-hate relationship with low pressure systems. Low pressure promotes rising air, which brings clouds, rain, snow, unstable conditions. Some of that could be good for you. Some of it could be bad for you. If it's strong enough, they will bring a lot of wind. And to identify their more specific characteristics, sometimes we'll name them. We refer to some of them as Alberta clippers or Colorado lows, panhandle hooks. It all depends on where they originate from. And they can also be various sizes from just a few counties wide to the size of a continent. So here are a few of the more impactful low pressure systems that you probably hear of all the time. So first we have what are called mid-latitude cyclones. Uh, now these are your Alberta clippers and your Colorado lows. These are literally mid-latitude cyclones because they form and they move through the mid-latitudes. And then you have hurricanes. Now these are also areas of low pressure, intense low pressure, that form out into the ocean. We know a lot about hurricanes and something that, you, that may come to a shock to you is that tornadoes are also low pressure systems, uh, just incredibly intense. In fact, the interior pressure of a tornado is actually stronger than a hurricane. Josh and Alicia, the low pressure systems that we are dealing with now, this time of year, typically are the Alberta Clippers and the Colorado Lows. In just a few short months, low pressure will also bring us thunderstorms. Mm. Very interesting to hear the science behind that. And you know, I yeah. hear people talk about uh, the different pressures impacting like migraines and headaches. So I don't, I don't know. The mid-latitude, low pressure, Amber, does that ever bring a tornado around? Is that Absolutely. possible? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mid-latitude cyclones are larger, intense systems. They have the cold fronts and the warm fronts. And along those fronts are where sometimes you find those thunderstorms during specific unstable conditions. Oh. We see that a lot in the summer. But it can be good and they can be good and bad for us just right. like... Uh, yes, they can. Yeah, you're right. They can bring a lot of rain. Yeah. We need that. Uh, or they can bring too much rain, too much snow. So it, it brings good and of course, the bad. I see why the love-hate relationship. Yes. All right. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> and there's still plenty of news and weather ahead on Good Day Dakota, including... Parkinson's disease does 